out They screaming peace when there ain't no peace Israel pop a sign in the streets Look at me, the center of attention Black Messiah coming with a vengeance Coming with a vengeance Black Messiah coming with a vengeance They screaming peace, it ain't no peace We pop a sign in the streets We seeking peace in the streets of Babylon Brandison Glock 40 tucking heat like a carry on Sending against the fathers, got me sleeping, not napping on Christ the King revealed this aerial phenomenon Kicking against the bricks, lose your soul when that fire come We purified, better than gold, got my Bible on And that's all that I know, where Babylon Don't fall, watch it blow, ayy Switching it up, the nation's gon' drink it I'm talking the cup, don't care what you thinking Believe in the gospel, the godly is thinking The fires of heaven gon' gather for dinner The eat of the flesh, the wicked, the sinner Your mama, your sister, your daddy, your cousin you Get they issue, if they mind, they don't repent they I want you to hear something. I want you to hear something. Then when the brother, when you get done, when you get done putting your air in your tire, bro, I want you to hear something, my brother. Read that for me. Brother Trey, when you hear something, brother, I want you to hear something when you get done pumping your tire, all right? I want you to listen to this. I want y'all to hear this real quick. Listen to this, my brother. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. So this God speaking about the last days. He said the last day he gonna do a marvelous work amongst his people. You know what that marvelous work is? He gonna have us understand that his son is actually a black man. He gonna have us understand that as long as we continue to hate each other in Jackson, we gonna continue to have black on black crime. Right. He gonna make us understand that our sisters gotta get in order. And us as men, we gotta set our neighborhoods in order. Because all y'all sisters looking for the man to lead. Deep down inside, it's natural. You say no, but it is you are. Because you can't do it. The, the woman can't do it. The woman can't lead our nation, sis. Right. Well, but honestly, like, a woman doing it now. No, she ain't. Uh, Who? The BP. Huh? The BP. She don't do nothing. Yes, she do. Show me a policy she put in. She do a stuff. Like what? She just did the um. She just did affordable. She just got affordable hair care and play. For who? For people. For who people? No. For she, what people? She, she did that as a <laughs> For what people? She wasn't up. targeting no minorities. She was just. She wasn't. She okay, so a she's home. a black woman put in her office to help minorities, okay, but she so don't help minorities. I can, say, up. I can say that, okay, women are not supposed to leave. Right. A man is, a man is supposed to be. He's a supposed lead, to leave, right? But the world we're living in now, women nowadays can't depend on men, so the I key, do everything myself. The key word, what you just said, the world we live in now. Oh. Right. That was not the world that God intended. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to show y'all. The world not what God intended it to be right now. That's right. Right. Many of the people, the whole world is, is how it is today is flipped upside down. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to show you right here. But God said he's going to do a marvelous work, meaning he's going to have men come and show other men how to be men and show our sisters how to get in order. Because as long as I, we the only community where the man and the woman fight. Bring it up. The white woman know to follow her man. Right. The Chinese woman know to follow her man. They own this store over here. She couldn't have that without her and her man being together on one accord. She hold down the books while he hold down all the permits. You see what I'm saying? She order all the supplies while he manage and make sure the money go where it's supposed to go. You need to be together. We not together in our communities. Right. And the reason for that is, is because we sinned against our God. When you look at that sign, those are the 12 tribes of Israel, Brother Trey. Right down on the end, those are the 12 tribes of Israel. When you read the Bible, the whole Bible talk about these people. Right. And God talk about what would happen to these people if they went against him. That's why he said he got to do a marvelous work. Meaning he got to give us why, why we went in slavery. Don't nobody want to answer that question. Because the white man didn't go into slavery on slave ships, nor did the Chinese, nor did the Arab. Why it happened to us? Why we live in the ghettos? Why our mothers and fathers crying? Why we mass incarcerated? Right. Why the vaccination been put out here to target us just like the Tuskegee Institute in Tuskegee, Alabama? Right. Why all these things happening? Why we had to pick cotton? You do realize deep down inside, every Caucasian, even as a kid, knows that their ancestors had us enslaved. That gives them a superiority complex. All of our kids know we used to be slaves. That automatically gives us an inferiority complex. Right. Meaning when we see them, we see God. When we see each other, we say, there go another nigga. Look at that nigga. Look how he looking at me. What the hell you looking at, nigga? Look what this whole, look this whole looking at me like that for. That's how we talk to each other. Our sisters call each other bitches. I don't respect that. I know, but that's what we do, though. We call each other bitches and hoes. We call our brothers niggas. 
You understand? We disrespectful to each other. We can't live amongst one another because we always trying to rob and kill each other. Right. So how did this happen? Because you know we didn't start off like that. You understand what I'm saying? So now we that's what that's what we're trying to show y'all right now. Right? Watch this. Read 15 real quick. Look, read 15. Come on. Verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. So watch this. Pop that drop there. The Bible says, Woe to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Meaning it's people on the earth that do things to trick the world as if God don't see it. Right. Like for instance, they gave you a white image of Jesus Christ. What color Jesus? No color. Does that make sense that a human being walked the earth without a color? That don't make no sense, brother. Right. You know? That's what I'm saying. The Bible tell you somebody sought deep to hide their counsel from God. They had some called iconoclasm. You ever heard of that? That's where you take, like for instance, say in 25, 30 years, when you have children or when you grow older, that people start saying that LeBron James was a white man or he was Chinese. You'll say, no, he wasn't. I lived during his time. I watched him play. He wasn't white. He's a brother. He black. But I'm saying, you actually lived during that time. They didn't. But somebody came and painted a different picture to trick your kids or to trick your family. You understand what I'm saying? That's what they did about Jesus. Right. They knew Jesus was black during the Renaissance, before the Renaissance period. Right. That's why I said iconoclasm. Look at this. You see the black pictures in the background? Now, what is this dude doing with his brush? He painted over that black image with white paint. Right. They painted Jesus, his mother, his father, and all of his ancestors as being white. That's called iconoclasm or whitewash. Right. They sought deep to hide their counsel from our people and from God. Keep reading. Watch this. And their works are in the dark. And they works in the dark. You didn't ever see them doing this. They did this behind closed doors. Right. Watch this. Read. And, and they say, who seeth us? They say, don't nobody see us doing this. Read. They, they were so prideful that they let somebody take a picture of them doing it because they knew black people would never see it. You understand what I'm saying? Watch this part. Watch this, brother Trey. Come on. And who knoweth us? Read. Surely your tur your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. You hear what the Bible says? The white man has turned the earth upside down. I give you an example. When you go to Africa, you got Egypt, the country Egypt, right? Do you know at the top of Egypt they call that Lower Egypt, and at the bottom of Egypt they call that Upper Egypt? Does that make sense? It's at the bottom. Why they call it Upper Egypt? Because the white man done flipped the map upside down. When you see the map the way you see it today, you think of it being north, south, east, and west. He done fooled us all. That's why they call it Upper and Lower Egypt, even though Upper Egypt is at the bottom and Lower Egypt is at the top. I'll give you another example. In today's time period, right? What do they teach young kids about their gender? As a child, say as a child, three, four years old, five years old, like for instance, say, say you born a boy. Does the white man give you the option to say when you're old enough and you got the money, you can change your sex to being a woman? Does he give you that option? Yeah. Yes, right? Did God make mistakes? Do God make mistakes? No. So what did God create you? He created you, man. He created you as what he wants. The, the set of tools you got is because God ordained it. Right. You understand what I mean? But the white man says, no, 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 no. Listen to me. I can have you, whatever your desire is, whatever your lust is, I can make you change to be whatever you want to be. But is that according to scripture? No, but they're not going to never stop. Who is they? The higher people we don't see. That's fine. But what can we do? Change ourselves. Yes, there you go. Let them do what they're doing. They also put, you know, they also put uh, chemicals in, on certain plants that when you eat it, it makes you sick. Right up. But we ain't got to eat it. You understand? We have a choice. The choice is if we're going to follow God or we're going to follow man. Right. Right? Do you deal, you got a, you got a boyfriend? You deal with men? Yeah. You do deal with men. What about you, brother? You got a girlfriend? You deal with men or you deal with women? You deal with women? You got a girlfriend? Okay. So you do deal with women. That's good. I'll praise to the most high. So that, so we're on the right track then. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be doing what God ordained. He ordained the man and the woman to be together to bring forth children. Right. Not for two men to be together, two women to lay together. But what has happened is the white man has taught us these things are okay. And by him teaching us these things are okay, maybe not all of us gonna fall to it, but some of us will. Right. And when some of us fall to it, now me and you, we talking about getting the kingdom of heaven and here come a brother talking about, no, you ain't gotta do that. It's confusion. Right. God didn't teach us or want us to be confused. You understand what I'm talking about? 
That's why we're telling you about the past. That's why we're telling you about the commandments. That's why we're telling you about being around strong men and sisters that know what a woman is supposed to be. Right? Let me ask you an example. What's, a, what's an example of a man to God? What does God say a man should be? Say again. I mean, a man is do what he's supposed to do. Like what? Go to work, take care of his kids. Wife. Okay. Take care of his who? His wife. And kids. Right. Take care of his wife and kids. Do many black men do that? Well, a major, a higher majority do it than what we've been taught. Right. We see the minority of it, and that's because that's what they push on television. Like they have shows like Diary of a Mad Black Woman. I can do a bad all by myself. That's to portray an image in your mind about black men. Right. But when you look at the, st the statistics, 80% of black men are married to black women, 80%. But we only see the 20% that they put on TV and they put on social media. You understand what I'm saying? We don't see the 80% that's actually doing something. Now watch this. Give me the book, of, I said you read that about the or a world upside down? Yes sir. Watch this. Watch what God says about how he gonna change us. Go to Romans 12 and 2. Watch this real quick, because we're talking about getting our community back to what it's supposed to be. Matter of fact, give me uh, 1 Kings 2 and 2 for the brother. Yes, Because he said a man is somebody to take care of their kids. You're right about that. And to take care of their wife. You're right about that. But it's more to being a man. The Bible tell you that. Read that for me. The book of 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Come on. I go the way of all the earth. Read. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. You ever heard of King David? King David was a mighty warrior. He died and he left his kingdom to his son called King Solomon, you heard of Solomon, right? Solomon's a black man according to the Bible. So King David is about to die and he's telling his son Solomon what he need to do. So he said, be a man, be strong. Watch this, read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Read. To walk in all his ways. Come on. To keep his statutes. Come on. And his, and his commandments. Watch this. And his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. You hear this? Y'all hear this, sisters? We talking about what a man is according to the Bible. Because what a man is compared to what the world says today and what a man is according to the Bible is, is different. Let me ask you a question. I got a question for you, sisters. And I want you to stay here with me, brother. You with me, brother Trey? You with me? So God said a man is supposed to be a man. What? If a man or woman cheat on him, should he stay with her? No. You say no. What you say? Uh, well, I don't it agree with him, but it depends. No, no. I don't, I don't, no. If, if a woman... We grown, you know what you're doing. So Okay, all right. So if a man is with a woman, girlfriend, married, whatever, and she cheat, if he a man of God, will he stay with her? Straight up. Bring it up. What you say, if sis? If he a man of God, I'm learning about You said if he a man of God, what? He not going to do it. What you say, sis? If he a man of God, he not going to do it, right? You would think if he was a man of God, he'll forgive her, but just because you forgive her, that don't mean that you would have to. I'm not forgiving that. Right. You don't have so, to do that again. so, okay. So, here's the thing. So, say I say, I forgive you, but we can't be together no more. Is that a man of God? Okay, God or not, we ain't gonna be together no more. Thank you. So, you hear this, don't you? The Bible says that's how it's supposed to be. Right. If a woman step out and cheat on her man, the Bible says he can't go back to her. He gotta be a man. That's right. A man can't let his wife be defiled. Think about this. Think about what some of these dudes be doing. Maybe. Yeah. Bring it out. It's kids out here. Some of the stuff that these men, they be trying to abuse another man, girl. They be trying to abuse another man, girl. Got a head in the bed, head, head in the damn baseball and everything. <laughs> Embarrassing. And then you gonna tell me I'm gonna stay with her. You understand? That's Bring not a man. Brother Trey, don't leave, Trey. We got more, Trey. Don't leave. Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. So a man of God, he gonna stand on what he believe in. A man of God gonna stand on his Bible. He gonna refuse to be defiled. Why? Because he a king. That's what the men is supposed to be. That's what we setting up over here. But in 2022, you know what women like? A lot of y'all sisters, maybe not y'all, but a lot of y'all sisters, you know what you like? Simps. Right. You want a man to, you want a man to be a simp? I'm gonna give you an example of a simp. You say no. Let me, let me ask you a question. All right, all right, so she start rolling the neck. You start, hold up. You say you don't want no simp, right? You say you don't want no simp. Was you okay with Will Smith slapping Chris Rock? No, no. Uh, you say no, you say no. She okay, she cheated, That's okay. That's what I'm saying. And then he's stupid. Why is he still with her he if he cheated on her? Okay, all right, so we got some sisters that got some. Okay, all right, pray, all praise it. But most sisters was agreeing with him slapping Chris Rock. You know why? Bring it up. Because most sisters like simps. They like men that they can dog out and disrespect and treat like crap, right. and he gonna still do whatever they say. Right. That's how some women like. But God is restoring man back to manhood. That's what we're trying to show y'all. Right. So as we come back to manhood, guess what y'all got to come back to? You got to come back to being a woman. Right, right. Now, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about women. 
How should a woman dress according to the Bible, my sister? Modest. Modest? Okay. What about you? What you say? Okay. All right. What about you? You don't know. All right. You're the young one in the crew. You're younger than them, ain't you? I can tell. What about you? How should a woman dress according? Oh, you disgusted. I just want to ask you. All right. Watch this. The, bu the book of 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 2 and verse 9. Listen. In like manner also, that woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. You know what modest mean? Anybody know the definition of modest? When you dress like... Oh. What dress that mean? Like you had you dressing now. How a man dress? That's how a woman not supposed to dress. That's what you're saying. No, I'm saying. Like, don't be wearing all that... Coochie I mean, coochie. Yeah. Okay, hi. Right. <laughs> you went old school. So here's a question. So the Bible says a woman is supposed to wear modest apparel. The definition of modest is when you don't display sexual attention. Right. Like for instance, sister come through here and she 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 working with something. You understand? But she got the booty shorts and her booty cheeks hanging out. The Bible says that's not modest. Because right. when men see her, not nobody here, but when the man you don't even be <laughs> Hey, you got all right, we're gonna deal with you. We're gonna deal with you. All right, I like you. You alright, you alright with me. You alright with me. We're gonna deal with you. So the Bible says that a woman shouldn't be dressed like that to cause sexual attention. Where she's showing her body to what men can know. Cause like for instance, all four of y'all, we should know what y'all working with. I should know the curve of your butt, I should know your breast, none of that. That ain't for me to know. That's for your husband to know only. But in America, they done taught us to dress a certain type of way, and that's not what God said we're supposed to be doing. So as men become men, this is what our sister had to become. So we went over with her earlier. What about jogging pants? Is that okay for women to wear in the eyes of God? You say yes? What about you, sis? You say yes? Or you don't know? You're not quite sure? Jogging pants, jogging pants ain't good for the, uh, for, great jogging pants ain't good for the boys to wear. Why not? I know, I know why you finna say that. <laughs> your mind went to file. She talking about the print. That's what you talking about. I already caught you, sis. Come on, man. I'm your big brother. I already know what you're thinking about. Right. So the Bible says our women are supposed to dress in modest apparel, meaning not causing sexual attention. When men see you, they're not supposed to automatically think sex. Right. They're supposed to be saying, okay, what kind of spirit the sister got? <clears throat> Is she right with God? Not, not our wives. You know why? Because our wives dress modest. They cover their body. Don't nobody know what my wife working with but me. You understand? Because she dress a certain way to not cause that sexual attention. That's what God said he wants you to do. Why What's your question? Wear rings? None of us wear rings. Yeah. That's an Egyptian custom. So we never did the, that. The males don't supposed to wear them just mm -mm. to be Women ain't supposed to wear it either. We never, that's something we never did. We never wore wedding rings. The white man taught us that. You know what we did do? Move her into our house. Right. Take care of her and our children. Right. And get a marriage license right. to right. show that we was married. You understand that, sis? You hear this, sis? Right here in the pink. You heard that? That we never did that back in the day. But you ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna cheat on her. And, and you gonna know when you come to my house and you see she got everything she need. Roof over her head, food in her stomach, car to drive, kids taken care of, got a marriage license. If I die, everything that I got go to her. My bank account go to her. You understand what I'm saying? So that's how I showed it my wife. The white man said put a ring on it. But people put a ring on it and the nigga Drop the ring in his pocket and go in the strip club like he ain't married. Right. What the hell put what he put a ring on it for? Right. It don't mean that it's just for show. Yeah. He ain't really taking care of her. You know what I'm saying? Deuteronomy 22 and 5. So the Bible says a woman's supposed to wear a modest apparel. You understand that, King? Yeah. The president say he don't believe no black people in the Bible. Okay, you don't believe black people in the Bible. Okay, I feel you. I know why. Because it's deep. Okay, all right. But here we go. A lot of people don't believe black people in the Bible because of this dude right here. Right. Because they see this, they see this dude right here. So Say where we don't know what. You don't know what he look like. Well, who look like? Don't nobody know what Jesus look like. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Is it, is it is it is the words of Jesus in the Bible? Yes. Was he talking to people? So it, there was. I'm asking question. Just think. Just think I with just, me. Just think, cause you you know. Because it's not. You must you must was alive when he made the Bible. Well, let me ask you a question. If I if let me ask you a question. Your ancestors live right. How you know they were black? Cause you black. Right. That's how you know they was black. Okay, What's your daddy is? Oh, uh, Revelation one fourteen. So watch this. So watch this, sis. She said, my brother right here. She said that ain't nobody ever seen Jesus, right? And that's what white people. That's what white people taught us. Ain't nobody ever seen him. But this the world. The world know this though. You know why? Cause they knew to take advantage of imagery. That's what white people do. They take advantage of imagery. Watch this. Read that for me. The Book of Revelation chapter one and verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The Bible said Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. 
Jesus Christ had an afro. If I take these braids down right now, I'm gonna have an afro walking around here. Same thing with the brother back there with the dreads. Same thing with this brother, this brother right here. We got woolly textured hair. You understand? Go ahead, watch this. As white as snow. And it was as white as snow, cause when a black man get old, his hair turned white. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Jesus Christ drank wine. His first miracle, he turned water into, you think he ain't drink none? He drunk some of it, cause the Bible said it was the best wine anybody ever tasted. Christ took a sip of it. Cause it's not seeing to drink, it's seeing to get drunk. You understand? Keep reading. And his feet, like unto fine bread. So now he looked down at his feet. This is John the Revelator. He looked down at Jesus Christ's feet, read, as if they burned in a furnace. He said his feet was like fine brass as if they burned in fire. If I take anything brown and throw it in fire, what color is going to come out? It's going to come out black, right? So what color was Jesus according to the Bible? So this is a man, John, that walked with him. John walked with Christ for three years. Matter of fact, John was his favorite disciple. He said, look, when you see me, write down what you saw. Now here go another example for you. Watch this. Give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5. So Jesus Christ had an ancestor called King Solomon. We were talking about it earlier, right? Watch what color Solomon is. Read. The Song of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 5. I am black, but comely. What Solomon say about his skin color? I am black, but comely. You hear that, my brother? King Solomon said I'm black and comely. You know what comely mean? Beautiful. King Solomon said I'm black and beautiful. You ever heard that term before? Somebody said I'm black and I'm beautiful. King Solomon originated that term. Yeah, he was he was still on that PCP or whatever he was on. He was on LSD when he seen the, the devil with eight arms. Watch this, y'all. Watch this one. Job 30, 30. Watch this, King. The book of Job before chapter. Before you leave, brother, I want to show you one more black person in the Bible. One more. Job Watch chapter this. 30 and verse 30. My skin is black upon me. This Job. What Job said about his skin? My skin is black upon me. You heard that, brother? Job said, my skin black. It don't get no, it don't get more clear than that. Right. Job said his skin was black. Jesus Christ's feet look like they burn in fire. Solomon said, I'm black and I'm beautiful. The Bible talk about black people, the whole Bible about black people. That's right. It's just that when our, our oppressor got his hands on it, he tricked our minds about it and told us God so love the world. Ain't that funny? Get this thing, this thing big, that's like a big ass sign. <laughs> Ain't it funny that they say God so love the world, but wasn't that written before they did this to us? This happened in the 1600s. God so love the world was in early, B, in early AD. You understand? So God didn't love the world when they was doing this to us? That's how you know they tricked our minds about the Bible. That's how you know they taught us lies. They were saying, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. And we all were like, yeah, Jesus, yes! Meanwhile, they was oppressing the hell out of us and putting us in a slave cotton field to pick cotton. Right. God didn't love the world when they did this to us, sis. It was written before they did it. So why they didn't apply that back then? Because he don't believe in the Bible. He took the Bible and he gave us his rendition of the understanding of it. But when you read the Bible, it talk about all these black folks and how men are supposed to be men and women are supposed to be women and men are supposed to lead their household, take care of their wives and children and women are supposed to submit to their husbands. But the black, the white man don't teach us that. Right. He let Tyler Perry put on a dress. Right. Tyler Perry is six foot five, bro. He down to my height. And he go on national TV as Medea twerking. Right. And black women applaud. Oh, Lord Jesus. Black people take, black women give him money. Black women go to his movies. Give him billions of dollars right. to watch him walk around like a woman. But then on the other hand, say, ain't no good men out here. Right, well, right. the good men, you don't want them. And the men that act like women, you give them billions of dollars. Right. So what message are we really putting out? That we really don't want true black men. Right. We want men, well, well, black women want men that's going to submit to them. And that ain't the way it's going to be no more. Right. Black men going to be who they supposed to be, which is the king. Give me that in 13 and 12 of Isaiah. Black men according to the Bible, are the rightful rulers of the planet Earth. Yes, this whole man. Earth gonna be ruled by black men when Jesus Christ come back. Right. When the black, you can drop that, when the black Messiah crack the sky, the Bible says the world gonna be given back to the black man. And guess what our wives gonna do? They gonna fall right in line. Y'all waiting for us to stand up now, guess what, we is standing up. The brothers in purple and gold, we standing up. And not all of us married. Some of these brothers preparing themselves for marriage, getting their self together, getting their house, getting their credit right. They got a car, they got things that they need to do to get themselves together, they doing that. But when we do that, our sisters got to come in and fall right in line with us. What right. we trying to build, we trying to rebuild our what nation. What was that at? <laughs> that was... Admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they... 
I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. With the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Didn't have to class. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Slavery destroyed us. That's why the black man and the black woman roles reversed. Because in slavery, the white man, Willie Lynch, said go to the woman. That's why when the police show up to your house, they walk right past your man and say, ma'am, what happened? Right. As if this man ain't even standing here. Right or wrong, brother? Okay. When, he, when we go to prison, they strip us down naked. Why they do that? To emasculate us. In slavery, if a black man didn't do what they told him to do, they would take all the black men, set him up, and then they would take tar and feather a black man, the biggest strong, like me, for instance. I'm the biggest dude on the plantation. Say I start talking crap to the, the slave mouse. He said, okay, we're going to make an example out of this nigga. Bring all the slaves out. All the slaves come out. They take my arms and put it on one end, on one horse. They take my legs, put it on the other horse, tar and feather me, set me on fire, smack both horses on the ass, and they pull me apart. To make the rest of the slaves say, y'all niggas better not try me. That's what they used to do. Right. Guess what they do to the black man today? Put a dress on him. Right. Get him high and right. get him on camera doing some homosexual stuff. So that he ever talk noise in the media, right. we can show everybody he'll doing some homosexual ah, stuff. Yeah. They do the same thing. It's called buck breaking. They have to break the buck. Right. They call us the buck, and they broke us, and they put our wives in front of us. But that mostly goes on in the industry. That goes on in the world, sis. I play in the NBA. It go on there too. They do whatever they can to keep us docile and weak. Long as we can put a ball in the hoop, yeah, no, they good. We good for them. What I'm saying is, they use them like if you can influence. Uh -huh. They use them to manipulate. Other, you. other. Yeah, right. Yeah. You exactly right about that. Like, I'm with you. Like That's called buck breaking. Rappers. But what if the rapper say, you know what? I'm done with all that. Jesus Christ, a black man. I'm gonna keep the commandment. You know what they'll do to that rapper, right? They will destroy his whole career. They'll say he crazy or they'll kill him. That's what they'll do. Why? To keep us all in fear to stand up for something. But they can kill us. We ain't worried about it. If they kill me, he gonna stand up and teach. If they kill him. He gonna stand up and teach. If they kill all of us, the next generation of men gonna come up and teach the same thing. Cause this last thing where we on right now, you can't stop this. They can't stop this. We gonna be teaching this to the day that Christ come. Regardless if they take us out or not, we know what we standing up for. We standing up for you now. We standing up for you now. You was in our congregation when no nigga touch you. When no man disrespect you. You understand? Well, you will never not have what you need. Same with my brother right here. We fall on hard times. This brother won't have to want for nothing. When brothers and sisters come amongst us, you really feel genuine love, but you also gonna get corrected. Right. If you're wrong, we're gonna tell you you're wrong, and that's what black folks need. Right? right? Get that for me, read it. The, bo the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 12. Watch this. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Gold is how they back money in Russia. They just instituted the gold standard again in Russia, right? So back in the day, you couldn't print money if you didn't have gold. The gold had to back the money. Ron was it Ronald Reagan, I think it was? He pushed that stuff out the window. He said, no, no more gold standard, just print money. How you think they was able to give people thousands of dollars uh, with a PPP loan? How you think they was able to just print that money up in America in a recession? How you think they was able to do that? Because they took away the gold standard. They could just make money. So God says, originally, everything is standard off gold. If you don't have the gold, you can't print the money. So now God said he gonna make a what? Read it again. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. In the future? When it get real evil on this earth, because this earth about to get real evil. It's about to get real evil out here. It's about to get even worse than what you see today. Right. This world, America about to go to war. All these countries about to be bombing each other. Right. It's about to be a famine. Ain't going to be many food on the grocery store. You already go to Dollar General in the hood right now. Ain't nothing on the shelves. God letting us know it's getting evil out here. Right. He about to take this world through hell for what it's doing against him and his people. So now he's saying in those days, he's going to make a man more precious than fine gold. He gonna turn a man into literal uh, gold in front of your eyes, so that you can see. Damn, the black men are kings. They just been miseducated. They just been taught wrong. But as they learn, right, we learning now to get ourselves together. Because the stuff I've been telling you, you like, damn, okay, y'all brothers really doing something out here. Most of our brothers ain't doing that. But it's gonna come a major. It's gonna come a, a, a time in the future where majority of our brothers gonna talk and think like we think, and they are gonna use the Bible to do it. Right. And you are gonna see, damn. That black man precious like he was before they brought us on the slave ships and we was kings in Africa. And we was kings on the eastern side of the earth. 
when everybody respected us and knew us, God doing that again, that's what he's doing right now. But first he said, we got to get ourselves in order. Once we set in order and set up ourselves as black men and become kings according to the Bible again, our sisters got to come on in right behind us and fall in line. That's what God called you sister to do. That's why the brother was telling you about the dress. It ain't because he hates you or want to embarrass you. It's because he it's because he love you. Right. That's love right there. We haven't give me Real Vitigas 19. We have been taught what love is. Have anybody out here really experienced true love? You say no, right? What about you, sis? When I say true love, I don't mean somebody that's just gonna console your feelings. I'm talking about somebody that really love you and they willing to tell you stuff that's gonna make you mad because they love you. I mean, you would think you would, but honestly, I don't know. I'm not, right. I feel like I'm too young to even know. Okay. Well, I see you got a strong spirit, so that comes from somewhere. You see what I'm saying? So what about you, my brother? Have you ever really experienced true love? Like, I'm talking about somebody really loving you just can't. Brother, mama, dad, and sister, cousin, no matter. They just really love you. You say your mama, right? Now, let me show you what love is according to the Bible. Because that's the first thing we always say. We say, my mama love me. Watch this read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thine brother in thine heart. So Bible said we're not supposed to hate our brother. In Jackson, Mississippi, we hate each other. Right. We murder each other. We kill each other in Jackson. We sell drugs to each other in Jackson. We rob each other houses in Jackson. They the other day, they some two grown ass men, 34 and 37 years old, killed an 18-year-old girl and then raped her body, then shot her two more times and dumped in the street, brothers. Uh, bring that it up. happened right here where you live, in Jackson. That type of stuff happened. I seen the other day. It was a drive-by shooting on Highway 80 and 220. Young brother shot a 47-year-old man. Took a wife's husband. Right. That happened in our community because God said we hate each other. Right. Read it again. Watch this, fam. Thou shalt not hate thine brother in thine heart. We're not supposed to hate each other. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. We're supposed to rebuke our neighbor. Meaning if you're wrong, I'm supposed to go to the Bible and show you wrong. If you're wrong, I'm supposed to go to the Bible and show you because I'm your brother. Don't leave, brother. Don't leave yet. Come on, read. And not suffer sin upon him. It said, and not suffer sin. So if I see you in sin, the true love is to tell you to come out of your sin. Right. Stop doing what you're doing according to God. If right. I see you in sin, my brother, if I'm your brother, I'm not supposed to see. God said the way to sin is death. You'll die if you stay in your sin. As your brother, I'm supposed to say, hey, stop your sin. Stop doing what you're doing. Because God said you're going to die if you keep doing it. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Some of these drive-by shooting is because somebody did something to somebody's family member years ago and they couldn't let it go. Right up. So now they come to shoot through and shoot up the whole block, hitting women, children, elderly women. 71-year-old woman right. shot in Jackson, Mississippi the other day. Right. What a black man that always want to come against us. Because a lot of black men want to come against us. They say they don't like the way we teach, what we teach. Them. But when are you going to come against the niggas that's killing and uh, shooting 71-year-old women? Right. Little young Real. folks. 71 years old, can't even go to the store. Right. That's what we're talking about. God said, love your neighbor as yourself. The only way to truly love your neighbor is to correct them. Right. Tell them when they're wrong. You understand what I'm saying? That's why the brother pointed out how you was dressed. He said, change. Not because he hates you, because he love you. Because the Bible say, like for instance, my sister right here, my brothers over here, they selling on the Lord's Sabbath day. Right. God said, we're not supposed to be buying or selling on his Sabbath. Right. But our people don't know that. And when we come and tell them that, they say we hating on their hustle. How? Go get your money. Sunday through Friday. Right. But on Saturday, that's for the Lord. You get the Lord one day out of your out of your week right. that you only dedicate to him. And don't do don't break his laws. Question. What you about to say? Uh, some people have jobs. Some people can't take off. Okay. Like me. I drive trucks. Okay. Nah, that's I'm where that not, spirit come from. I'm not That's where that strong spirit come from. You driving truck, you doing man's work. But you making your money though. Go ahead, sis. You ain't in sin. I haven't. I can't take off every Saturday. Okay. So now, this this where your faith come in, right? I used to work. I'm an entrepreneur now. Many of my brothers, my brother right there, drive a truck. He been driving a truck thirty years. See what I'm saying? He he been driving a truck thirty years. You know what he did? He went to his boss and said, "Hey, look, this is my religion. I believe I need to have Saturdays off, according to my religion." And right. the boss said, "Okay, well, if it's religious, bring me a letter." Guess what we did? Got him a letter. You took it to the boss. The boss said, hey, you can have Saturdays off. I respect your religion. 
But you got to have faith in God first. Right. Without the faith, the Lord ain't going to be behind you. You got to have right. faith that this is the work, right? 1431 of Matthew. So the Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. The reason we don't love the Bible and the reason we don't love the Lord is because we lack faith. We think that if we come out here and teach these things, the white man to hell with what he got. He can't take nothing from us that God don't want us to have. If you ain't getting something, it's because the Lord don't want you to have it. The white man ain't got no power over the Most High. The Most High allow the things to happen in our community because we breaking his commandments. That's why we can't vote nobody in office to take away the drugs from our community. We've been voting and voting and voting. It don't work. Because God got the things happening in our community because we're breaking his laws. Right. Watch this. Read what you got. The book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 31. Yep. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You hear that? The Most High said, where your faith at? You little faith, why you doubting? The only reason we doubt is because we still got sin on our mind. Right. We don't think the Lord going to stand up for us and do certain things for us. Because deep down inside, we know we're not doing right by him. Right. When you know you're not doing right by the Lord, you can't expect no blessings. Because deep down inside, you know, well, if it don't happen, it, 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 go get that for us. We got to sit. We got to sit. Get it for Get it for Right? 1 John 3, 22. This is why we doubt in our communities. Because we don't think the Lord got our back because we're breaking, breaking his commandment. Don't leave yet, bro. We're going to go script with you. Pull over to the side. Go, let's pull up some scriptures with this brother, man. Come on, read. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments. Read. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. When you don't do the commandments, when you don't do the things that are pleasing to God, the Bible says, then you're not able to receive what you ask for. Now, that may not be a mansion and a, and a million in your bank account, but you're going to eat. You're going to have clothes. Right. Your rent gonna be paid. Right. Your children gonna not gonna be hungry. You gonna have clothing you need. Your car gonna be able to get back and forth. You understand? These are the things that are essential to our life. But the, the problem with us, we want buku. Right. I done had buku and I was miserable. You understand? I done had a lot of money and I was a miserable dude. You understand? Because every time somebody called me, they were calling about some money. Hey man, man, can you help your cousin out? Can you help? I'm like, damn, before I was playing ball. Then none of y'all want to even talk to me. Then I get some money. Now everybody want to say they my friend. They my cousin. Oh, remember me? My, my daddy said, come out the woodwork. You heard that before? Everybody come out the woodwork. All of a sudden you get money. Bring it out. So money bring issues. Money right. bring problems. Right. But the Bible telling you, if you keep God's commandments, what you need, you're going to have. And you can be content with that thing. Right? Godliness with contentment is great game. First Timothy 6 and 6. But we ain't been taught that, sis. We've been taught, chase the bag, chase the bag, chase the bag, get the money, run up a check. That's all we've been taught. So, is it wrong if we wanted to chase that? No, it's not wrong, but you can't let that get before God. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. That not right, but the money come before God, because guess what? Saturday is God's Sabbath. We ain't supposed to be buying, selling, or working. Right. But instead of asking our boss for the day off, in faith, we don't do it because we think he gonna fire us. We think we gonna lose the bag. Right. So the bag calls us to go away from God. The Bible calls it an idol. You heard an idol before? Something you idolize, something you worship. We worship the almighty dollar. It ain't nothing but a piece of paper. Right. The white man, the devil, the Bible speak of. He is the devil. You know right. how you know? Because he know the dollar ain't worth nothing, but he got Negroes in the hood fighting over it. Right. Killing each other over it. Right. And he know it ain't worth nothing. He laughing at us. Read what you got. The book of First Timothy chapter six and verse six. But godliness with contentment is a is great gain. You hear what the Bible say? The Bible say godliness with contentment is great gain. Meaning you make them, you may make 150 bands a year. The Lord may bless you, you make $150,000 a year, right? But you ain't happy with that. So you say, I'm gonna work on God's Sabbath. Every Saturday I'm gonna work overtime so I can make 175 next year. But why? God already blessed you with the 150. Right. Just being greedy. That's why the Bible says godliness with contentment. That's great gain. Keep reading. For we brought, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. You ain't taking none of that with you. All that money you got in the bank account. You know, some people just like to see the money stack, 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 but they won't pay their rent. Your car note do, but you won't pay the car note. But you got bands in the bank, and you're like, what's wrong with me? That's that covetous spirit. We just like to see the money stack. But the Bible says you can't take it with you. You just need what you need to take care of your family. That's all we need. But America taught us to be greedy because the white man greedy. Because Christianity is greedy. Your pastor, he taking all the money out your collection plate. 
The Bible don't say we're supposed to be giving these pastors 10%. Right. That was for the Levites. Your, right. your pastor ain't Haitian. The Haitians are the Levites. The Bible said we were supposed to get him 10% during the time of Moses. Go ahead. Come on. And having, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. The Bible said be happy with the foods you got that you can fill your belly, make sure your family eat, and your clothing that you got. And of course your house. Make sure you got a house, car, get back and forth. Those are the things we need. Water, food, clothing, a house. And maybe a car to get back and forth. But we want the biggest house. We want the most cars, right. the most expensive rims, right. the nicest radio sound system. We want to just feel, I remember when I was playing ball, I go buy me a, a, a sack of weed, let my windows down with my peanut butter seats and just sit in the parking lot and smoke weed. And I used to feel like I was doing something. Meanwhile, my rent dude, my wife at home crying because I'm, a, che I'm a, a cheater, an adulterer out of the strip club late at night just to try to show off for the world. But really, what you getting? Unhappiness. So the Bible telling you, just be content with what the Lord bless you with. Keep reading. Watch this, though. Watch what he say about the, those that want to be rich, though. Read. But they that will be rich. But those that only want the bag, only want to be rich, read. Fall into temptation. You fall into temptation. And a snare. And a what? And a snare. And a snare, read. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. I'll give you an example. Many actors and entertainers and rappers Men will let another man ram them in their behind to get a big contract. Right or wrong? Many of these rappers will let another man put his rod inside. They wrecked them just to get a bag. Bring it out. Manipulated, brought down. Many of our sisters, like Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, yep. will be strippers and have sex with niggas every single night just to become a rapper, just to get the money. Just to manipulate your daughters and have your daughter talking about bad girl or high girl summer. Right. Like we done failed real low. We was the kings. Jesus Christ the king, we was the kings. We lost all that down. We got to bust it open to get a bag. God said, nah, if you want to be rich and that's the only thing you strive for, listen, if God wants you to be rich, you going to be rich. That's right. Ain't nothing nobody can stop you from, do get, from getting the money. The money will fall in your lap if God wants you to be rich. But if the Lord don't want you to be rich, you're going to be out here chasing the bag, losing sleep, losing family members, losing friends, losing husband, losing wife, losing children, because your only thing you want is the money. You ever seen the show Snowfall? You ever seen Snowfall before? Anybody ever seen that? Where's this young black man that sell dope? He put his whole family on. Now as you get later on in the season, he start killing his friends, right. turn his back on his mama, turn his back on had his own daddy killed. The white man he worked with killed his daddy. All because he wanted the money. And when they said, bro, you done turned into a monster, he said, but all my people rich, though. Half of them did. Right. So God telling us we can't strive only for the bag. We got to start getting ourselves righteous. Right. We got to start walking righteous. Toby 12 and 8. You understand that, King? We got to start walking righteous. The bag ain't the only thing. Get your money. That's cool. But Saturday is for the Lord. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown for the Lord. That's why ain't none of us working right now. We out teaching. Right. Then we're going to go back to our congregation and we're going to watch class and we're going to enjoy the rest of the day. And rest, like the Bible says. Read it for me. The book of Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 8. Yep. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. Read. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. The Bible say you can be broke, not have a lot of money, but you're able to take care of what you can take care of. And you keep God's commandments. You're a righteous sister. The Lord said that's much better than to have a whole bunch of money and be an evil person. That's what the Lord is telling you. Read that part again. Better at what? Prayer, prayer, and prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It's better to be righteous and not have that much than to have all the money in the world, but be a person that people don't like to be around. They hate you. And guess what happens when you get money? People start, you start to change. Right. I been there, I didn't change, I done became arrogant. The Lord could have killed me many nights. And he had mercy on me so I can come out here in these last days and teach my people what I used to do and how I stopped. You can do the same thing, that's what we calling you to do. You understand? That's what we calling you to do. That's why the Bible said a woman's supposed to wear a dress, supposed to prepare herself, love your natural, beautiful hair, because I'm sure your hair is naturally beautiful. Love that thing, be like Christ. Walk like the Messiah, that's what we trying to do. We ain't perfect, but we trying to get there. Right. We ain't gonna sit and act like we don't make no mistakes. And we just the most righteous people. The Bible say our righteous is filthy rags. And we can do all the mighty works in the world, but the Lord still say that ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? So we don't never brag. We just come out here and just do 
what we're supposed to do, which is teach our sister, teach our sister, teach our brother, raise up our nation. That's what we're here to do. We love you. That's love. That's the all the love in the world right here. Right? One more scripture before I let it go. Um, Revelation 22, 14. Then we got to go back to the school. You can follow us to the school. Right? Them sisters going to make you put on a dress, though. They're going to give you a dress to put on. I'm going to tell you that right now. They ain't going to let you come in like that. <laughs> Revelation 22, 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. The Bible said that's the true blessing when you keep the commandments of God. Because no matter what happens, you know on judgment day, you're going to get the call to go through the gates. You know already. That's why he said that's when you truly blessed. Go ahead. That they may have right to the tree of life. You may have a right to the tree of life. You earn your way in. Go ahead. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs. So outside the kingdom of heaven going to be dogs. Now, he ain't talking about no Rottweiler or no German Shepherd. Right. He's talking about other races of people. The Bible called God called them dogs. They not they unclean to him. The white man's unclean to God. Right. He eat pork. God said, don't eat that. He kill people and take their land. God said, you ain't supposed to murder. He do that anyway. He steal. He rob. He rape. That's what he did to us. Then, after he do all that to us, he give us a white Jesus that ain't even in the Bible. Right. God said, do not do that. And he do it anyway. So the Bible said, outside of the kingdom of heaven going to be dogs. The kingdom of heaven for you, sis. Read. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. And whoremongers. And whoremongers. That's a man that cannot keep it in his pants. He got to sleep with somebody girl or cheat on his girl with somebody else. Go ahead. And murderers. And a murderer. That's what you see in Jackson. Murder. Go ahead. And idolaters. And idolater. That's this right here. That's Christianity. Christmas ain't in the Bible. You know that, right? But we do got holidays in the Bible like the Feast of Dedication. You heard of Hanukkah? We think Hanukkah's for the white man. We think that's his holiday. No, that's when our ancestors defeated the Greeks right. and set our temple back up. That's why I call the Feast of Dedication. We right. rededicated our temple. And guess what we do on those days? It's eight whole days and we give gifts to our children for eight days straight. Now, what you need Christmas for? Why do you need a holiday that ain't even in the Bible when God gave you holidays where you can still do the same thing, celebrate, but rejoice in the Lord for his way he did for us and you can also take care of your children to make sure they got what they need. It's better than Christmas. Right. Go ahead. And whoso loveth and maketh a lie. He said, who don't love it and make it a lie? The white man took the Bible and he turned it into a lie. Right. He took Christianity and taught us lies. Right. He murdered us. He robbed us. He raped us. He teach us lies in our school. He teach young black men that they niggas and, and thugs. When we not, we the kings of the earth. That's we right. just been lost. We lost right now. God trying to get us to come back come back to who we truly are that's what the lord trying to get us to do that's why he said you truly blessed when you keep the commandments we used to scream black power while heron was pushed but at the end of the day nothing's in vain iuic has been given a vision the tents of judah has risen many has attempted the mission minor murmuring omitting and missing the mark just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.